Do you spend time watching those oddly satisfying videos? And if you do, why? Now, we could be over-spiritualizing this, but we see a connection between the world's need for the gospel and this weird obsession with satisfaction videos. Yeah, so stick around because we're going to talk about satisfaction. Let's get it. Hey, we're your hosts, Nick Smith. And Kylie Jo Smith. And we are talking today about being satisfied. Yup. Satisfying. Oddly, we're talking about so satisfaction. Satisfied. <laughs> Wait, maybe you should not talk like this. No, that's that's different. That's Dang, ASMR. Right that's a whole different stuff. thing. Oh, that's different. Is that's this not satisfying. That's not satisfying. Okay. I think satisfying would be like overly pronouncing every single concept. <laughs> <laughs> We're new. We don't know what we're doing. <laughs> uh, hey, before we get too deep into this, um, we got a quick announcement. Uh, we got a little something coming up. What we got? What's happening? Well, come on, tell them. Tell long them ago, before there were pandemics and quarantines and masks and, and social distancing, all of that. we did a thing. We started a thing. We started this process of the mixtape EP, and we released it to you all. We released what we had to you all. Well, to last the inner circle. Year. Inner Circle? Was the Inner year? Circle. Last year, yeah. Yeah. But um, it's now complete. The EP is complete um, for public listening. <laughs> for the public. For the public. We re-recorded some stuff. We uh -huh. um, got have, a new song on there. Yep. And so uh, that is going to be available for pre-order April 19th, 2022. Ooh, coming up. And uh, it will be released worldwide uh, April 29th. And so go ahead and jump on wherever you're going to be. And uh, Oh, you want to hear it. You're going to want to hear it. And it's crazy because, like, I don't want to, like, brag. Don't but, mean to um, brag. I don't mean to boast. It, it makes a difference when you have, like, a sound designer who, like, you can tell them, like, hey, I, I really want this kind of sound for this because it's a specific type of EP. Um, and your sound designer is like, okay, let me go work on it. And then they work on it. Sounds awesome. If only we had one of those. <clears throat> because I, <laughs> I had the thing guys i had it, uh, so I had to use but it. anyway yeah so yeah please go ahead and tell your friends and family we've already mm -hmm. started releasing like little promo stuff that's what this is yes. we're releasing it the out promo there stuff. for you all <laughs> in the um, in the ether to be able to um to kind of hear some little snippets and actually when you pre-order it you will get an instant gratification track because we all know that's satisfying. You got to get right? it. You when you get the get instant it. gratification, that's kind of the world we live in. And so there's that option for you if you want to be satisfied. There we go. Um, Inner Circle, what's up? Uh, thanks for rocking with us as always. Um, hope you guys enjoyed my goofy little birthday video um, <laughs> where Kylie Joe's making fun of me. Ooh, it was um, good. It was rich. When I got my, really my donuts rich. and my coffee. Anyway, <laughs> so if you don't know what I'm talking about and you have no idea what the Inner Circle is, please go to www patreon.com slash Nick Smith podcast and you can find out how you can be a part of our inner circle so do it I think that's it all right that's so let's talk about this satisfying video thing because I've seen there's some that I've watched like mm -hmm. I'll see them they'll, they'll pop up on my news feed or they'll like somebody will send it to me and I'm like oh, okay I'll watch this for a while and like some of them are like people cooking mm -hmm. or like making food look a certain way yeah or people peeling fruits and vegetables and like it's yeah. like it doesn't like squishing have, stuff yeah like and it doesn't have to be perfect that's a weird thing like mm -hmm. i thought because I'm, I'm a perfectionist and i like i tend to when i'm watching things if there's like something off on it i'm like well that's not satisfying but the, some of the satisfying videos have you know it's not perfect mm -hmm. but it's just satisfying yeah, it's I, interesting i'm not gonna lie i still don't understand what it means <laughs> like, <laughs> i feel like andy it's, dwyer on, <laughs> on parks and rec <laughs> And I'm afraid <laughs> to say anything at this point that I don't really know. Just keep what, acting like you know what it is. Yeah, yeah it's so going, satisfying. Oh, my goodness, satisfaction, guaranteed. But like, it's, uh, it's like when you're watching, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's like there's, exactly. there's a feeling exactly. you get when you watch dominoes. So, like, those videos of dominoes where it's, like, yeah. perfectly lined up and everything goes perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not perfect, but it's, like, everything hits just right and you see the whole picture Just unfold. hits different. It's different. I see, and I don't feel any emotional or physical res like response to that. I, huh? in in my deepest heart of hearts, I'm like, I don't care. I don't. <laughs> it's entertaining. Don't, like I, I think at first it is entertaining. Definitely. Yeah, it's like, oh wow, that's really cool. Like those, there's some guy that does the domino thing. It's mm -hmm. like he does huge 
pieces displays. of art with dominoes and mm-hmm. yeah, displays. And it's just really cool to watch it because you're seeing all these mechanisms and there's like a part of you that wants the next stage of the, the art yeah. to go the way it's supposed to. And when it does, it's satisfying because you're watching like, oh yes. It's like, oh, look at the picture that it made is so cool. Yeah. Um, like, I know. guess I get the, I get the concept, yeah. but I don't get the emotional attachment. And uh, we deal with students, um, mostly um, teenage mm-hmm. and preteen students. And um, that's a big part of like that Gen Z, that, that young student culture is like the, the cringe or the satisfaction yeah, videos. The and then like, no the fidgets and all the, the uh-huh. poppers. Oh, it's so satisfying to have this popper, have this squishy thing. And, and I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't, yeah. but like, I get the concept is like, you want something that, that fulfills, like that brings your expectation into reality. Like, oh, that looks like it's going to be squishy. And then when you squish it, you're like, okay, it is. That's, that fulfills mm-hmm. that moment of my expectation is now met. But, um, I, I've never sat and just watched satisfaction videos. Now I have watched like cool trick, like dude, perfect videos, like where oh, people yeah, do like cool. cool tricks or like, it's um, like one in a million chance is going to look the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. Or yeah. like the amazing, um, amazing human things like, yeah. like, wow, how did that person do that cool thing? Yeah. Um, but the, I think there's this weird obsession with having to be satisfied. Yeah. Now, if you missed our last video, we talked a little bit about, um, happiness and about how, uh, in our culture, there is this connection or this um, undertone of the standard of life is supposed to be happiness, situational happiness, and how that kind of runs counterculture to the, the scriptures, counterculture to who we're called to be as believers. And so um, I kind of feel the same way with this satisfaction yeah, piece. I like uh, you, had, you had mentioned in the last episode, um, actually it was a, like a, a reference from Ecclesiastes that, mm. that God puts uh, eternity in the hearts of man. Like God gives each person glimpses of of what was and i think we all have this expectation of like things aren't the way they should be Mm -hmm. but even having that thought of like there should be something more should be something excuse me complete or something satisfying um kind of points us in a a direction away from our current reality yeah and i mean there are some things that we can look at I, i love watching like nature videos like time lapse those are very satisfying because it's like oh wow like this is this is nature. Like this is yeah. the way a flower is supposed to bloom. This is the way that the sun rises. And just to see those things um, that maybe we don't get a chance to look at and watch on a mm-hmm. daily basis. Like nobody sits and watches a flower bloom like from start to finish. Or and if, if you, you do, do, that's wow. Like dedication. Comments. Let us know um, what you do for a living and but, how you um, can afford that time. For those of us that don't get that, I mean, that's why those videos, um, like natural ones to me are like, oh wow. Like in nature, we see the design is mm-hmm. of completion and like things start a certain way and they end and they come to like bloom in the case yeah. of a flower. Um, and it's also cyclical when you watch certain things like the, the moon and all these things that like we're fascinated with them on some level, but we don't really take the time to understand how the whole arc of creation like points to that, that, yeah. that God did create our world to be appreciated um, in in fullness, like in yeah. the fullness of um, his, his creative um, beauty. Yeah. And I think it's cool because like, um, like we were created to be satisfied. We're created to like experience satisfaction. Like God created this whole garden yeah. and he made everything in it that was good. It says that when he saw that it was good to me, like, and not just to me, but like the, the understanding in that context is like, oh wow, it was, he was satisfied with his work. Yeah, he, he he looked at it. He didn't say, "Oh, you know what? I I could do a little bit more. I could do something different. Mm-hmm. Let's tweak it." It was like he he made the ultimate satisfaction video like <laughs> when he when everything unfolded. He was like, "Yeah, and this is gonna happen this way, and it's gonna happen this way." <laughs> um, but unfortunately, that was fractured. Like all of that yeah. good creation, um, from its a source, good good creation, a good good <laughs> was was fractured, and so now we have this cry for satisfaction and it causes us to, because we're broken, because we have a bent from birth Mm -hmm. to, um, it causes us to seek satisfaction in the wrong thing. Yeah. And it causes us to seek, um, like, it's not that finding satisfaction is bad Mm -hmm. or seeking it. It's that the things or the people relationships, um, that we seek that that satisfaction in are are warping, um, our focus. They're turning us away from our creator, um, who eternally and, situationally satisfies us to this, you know, maybe a video, maybe it's a, a 
an object or a thing that I can yeah. say, oh, wow, if I just watch that another, you know, 100 times, my, <laughs> my anxiety will go down um, yeah. because we, we don't have that um, internal satisfaction that comes from the Lord. Well, and I think part of, uh, I love, there's a couple things that you said that just kind of struck chords. One is the idea of seeking something that you can control mm. for your satisfaction because you can control these videos, you know how they end. Um, you can control certain things like um, fidget toys and, and different things that people find satisfaction in. Um, and it does reduce anxiety in some folks. Um, actually, I remember watching or um, studying in one of my psychology classes in uh, undergrad, they were talking about how the, the psychology of streaming and binging um, mm. shows that you've seen before, yep. restreaming and yep. re-binging. The office. The office is the classic <laughs> because you know, like, you know the character arc and you get to relive those moments and knowing where they end. Mm -hmm. And so seeing, you know, Pam and, and uh, yep. Jim yep. early on in the relationship, you know that it's, it's not unrequited and that it's mm -hmm. going to bring fulfillment. If I just spoil the office for anybody, you're late by like 10 years. So <laughs> just deal with it. Um, <laughs> but um, you see that, like, you know where that's, where that's going. And mm -hmm. so you get to participate in that moment and experience fulfillment at the end. And I think, the, the level of anxiety and the level of stress that we live with on a daily basis seeks people or not seeks people causes people to seek. It's that <laughs> seeks people. <laughs> it does. Chaos will find you, especially if you got kids. Um, but if, um, but the chaos and the, the stress of the world will cause you to seek out things mm -hmm. that you can find routine, yeah. mundane, that you can find completion in. And I think that arc of completion <clears throat> is echoed in our souls, whenever something is incomplete, we feel that lapse. We feel that loss. Yeah. Um, and if, uh, before we get too far into this and just kind of get to the theology aspect of it, if you know people, if you're one of those people that you love these satisfaction videos and you're like, wait a second, I ain't never thought about it like that. I, I ain't never thought about that. I never thought about it like that. Um, then please share this video. Share this with somebody who yeah. uh, enjoys those videos. Hopefully they find satisfaction in this video. Um, I wish I had something cool to do or like I can. I know I thought about, I should have grabbed one of our bubble poppers and just been the whole here. time just sitting there popping. I can it. just I can click really fast. Actually, I've heard when I've been typing things before ASMR. that um, I know, but even just the like the like yeah, it's okay. So sorry, you're fine. Just the sound of the click of a completed like email. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, that's so satisfying. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't get it. <laughs> or chopping something mm -hmm. um, over and over again. or To, the, um, to, a, to a rhythm, as long as you're not yes. doing it sporadically. Yeah, like now, I'll rhythm. mess with people, and I'll do stuff just to mess with people. Yes, all the time. Like those videos where you see... <laughs> Oh my gosh! Where, where they like, ruin it? Oh yeah. Where like somebody is like drawing with a paper, and then they just like, <laughs> or like you know what I mean? You know messed what I'm up. Saying. That's messed up. The thing on the um, on the deal on the interwebs. Yeah. It's well, and like I think it's interesting you're talking about like seeking control or seeking like anybody out there. Tell if this is you, raise your hand or no, turn to your neighbor. I don't know. <laughs> when things start getting a little bit too hectic in your life, mm -hmm. or you know you feel out of control, maybe it's something small, maybe not. You need to clean. Mm. Like you need, you got to clean something. Yeah. Or you need to rearrange furniture. I don't know anybody like that. Or maybe, you know, you just, something needs to be, <laughs> something needs to be rearranged or organized. Yeah. Those are indications that, okay, I, there's a lack of feeling like you have power mm -hmm. or control in a situation. And so, and there's a healthy way I think to use that because mm -hmm. there are situations that we just don't have control over. We, yeah. we are powerless in a situation, you know, maybe somebody else is making decisions for us or um, <clears throat> in your job or maybe there's a situation in your city or like in politics. I don't know wh whatever scale it's at for you, but you just feel the need to to like change something that you grasp. know you can change to yeah, grasp, grasp it, something. to see it from start to finish mm -hmm. and to know that, OK, I did this. I did this. And it's not yeah. necessarily a thing of like I did a good job. But it's like I was able to affect change in this thing, and now it is complete. Well, and I think that also speaks to the rise of so many uh, legalistic um, practices within churches, within denominations, but also mm. um, a consistent rise in um, kind of pagan practices. That that I've that. Uh, so one thing that I've noticed a lot in culture is um, the the rebirth of mysticism and Gnosticism in a lot of ways where people are buying into these quote unquote ancient traditions, um, which really are just uh, rebranded Gnosticism or rebranded 
cultishness okay. where you you have things, whether it's linea- um, genealogy and lineage okay. or um, even like stones and amulets and potions mm, and I brews yeah, and yeah. Um, seeking the stars, seeking to understand your stars so that you can control your destiny. Like all of these things that you're reaching out for are really just attempts to to control something. Because if I can understand, if I can grab the right combination of, of potions, if I can get the right combination of stones in my life or crystals, if I can have um, the right energy or meditate the right amount of time, then, then things in my life will go better. Mm. Like I, I can't succumb to the fact that I'm out of control. And so if I say the right mantra, um, which sounds a lot like magic incantations, if you ask me, but if I say the right mantra, again, not knocking affirmations, but there are people that really believe that. I have to say these words in this way, otherwise good won't come to me. Or I have to have these things around me, otherwise positive energy won't flow my direction. The universe mm. won't give me the things that I want if I don't do something. And that stems from a place of my anxiety is so high, my, my sense of control is so low that I need to be able to grasp something. And a lot of times those things that we grasp are things that we can see completion in. We can see final, like some sort of, um, cycle or mm-hmm. cyclical aspect where it's like, I do this, I see this, I get this. Um, and that brings satisfaction into our life in a way, yet we continuously do it because <clears throat> it doesn't bring ultimate satisfaction. Yeah, there's no closure. Yeah, there's, there's no, no true closure. There's no nothing in our spirit that rests at mm. that moment. And I love um, St. Augustine who said, uh, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. Yeah. And like, that is such a true statement of, of hu- the human condition. And so yeah. like we have to seek satisfaction um, where it's supposed to be found. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I love that like one of the things that um, we kind of overlook in the creation story until the Ten Commandments are, are given mm-hmm. is this idea of rest. Yeah. And um, we, we know that Moses taught the people of God that rest is a commandment of of God. It's like you mm-hmm. must rest on the seventh day. You must do your work days one through six and then you rest. Yeah. Um, understanding that that was um, at the time it was like a short, not a short term, but it's like, okay, you do your work and then rest. But yeah. this was supposed to be, <clears throat> excuse me, um, a, a way to point us toward eternity, which is our eternal rest. Mm-hmm. And this bigger picture that, okay, for a time you will work and then you will be at rest. You will be able to enter into your master's rest and your master's peace and all of these things. And the reason we are instructed to rest is because that's what God did in the beginning. And I think when I think about what does satisfaction do, like how, why, why do we need to be satisfied? Why does that have to happen? It's not just um, so that we feel something in the moment. Truly when we are satisfied, we are able to be at rest. Mm. We are able to find the, like, you know, after a long day's work, like a good day of hard work, you can rest like it's your body may feel tired and it's like, Oh, I need to rest. Mm -hmm. But you also mentally and spiritually and emotionally find that I can rest because I don't have to go through all of the situations that didn't play out the way that I wanted them to. Um, Because I've, I find satisfaction knowing that even though this didn't go the way I wanted it to, ultimately I'm not the one in control. Ultimately Mm, I don't have to control the other person. When we find that we're unable to rest, Mm -hmm. that we're unable to, stop playing the tape over and over in our minds it's because we're not satisfied Mm -hmm. there's a lack of satisfaction over um situations at work or um relationships in your family relationships with friends or your children your parenting you don't have satisfaction in this area and therefore it affects your ability to rest to find that peace um and i think it's interesting that we will talk about like the peace that surpasses all understanding we'll Mm -hmm. talk about um, finding peace in the Lord and peace being this like woosa, like I need need the peace. I think we can say we have peace while we're awake and we're walking around. It's like, okay, great. But I'm interested in knowing for the Christians out there can you sleep at night. Mm. Like to, to me, this for this for me is like, okay, do I really have the ability to close my eyes and rest? Because if I don't, I know that I'm not satisfied. Something is not fulfilled. Something today was not completed or I'm, I'm just irking me. I need to go back and do it. 
Um, for me, it's often things like with work or housework. Oh, God, mm-hmm. I just I didn't get that load of laundry done, and it's keeping me awake. Well, and I I would <clears throat> I don't know the dem- I don't know the the math or the um, statistics. I don't know where you're getting your st- statistics, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would I would wonder if those satisfaction videos peak around bedtime or Ooh, late at night. Yeah. I would, I'm just curious yeah. if if any of you know. Please comment because I know I could Google year. it. Yeah, or certain types of year, like around uh, Christmas and around um, major holidays, Thanksgiving and, and New Year's. And um, I think also that that drive to to be satisfied, um, it's echoed in culture in such a way that one, you see it in marketing, you see it in, um, I think I saw it in a, a jelly commercial or something online where like they were like pouring out the peanut butter and jelly in little squares. Oh. And it was like Jif or Smuckers or I don't know. So something. satisfied. Exactly. And so uh-huh. or even like like Hamilton, like one of the biggest musicals Ooh, yeah. of the past, what, five, six Everybody's years? Satisfied. Yeah. It's a huge number. And people resonate with that idea yeah, of like uh-huh. when when she says you he'll never be satisfied. Like people are like, oh, dang, he's not going to be satisfied because we value satisfaction so much mm-hmm. that that was such a blow to like, wait, there's unfulfillment in his life. But to the believer, we, we have to understand that this life is unsatisfying. Mm-hmm. The, the, the reason we know that there's more, like one of the things that, that C.S. Lewis, I remember um, reading about his journey into the faith. And one of the things that, that drew him into the idea of there's something, there being something else uh, apart from just living and dying is the fact that we never seem to accept death as the end. Like, mm. No matter what culture you're a part of, it's like, there always seems to be like it's so unsatisfying mm-hmm. that you live so many years, and then when you die, you always you always think yeah. there should be more years. There there should be something else, mm-hmm. and and in our heart of hearts, we know there has to be something. And so, like for the believer, satisfaction is never guaranteed on mm-hmm. this side. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we have to come to terms with dissatisfaction so much that that faith comes into play, even in our in our walk. Sometimes it's like how many believers out there are unsatisfied and like, I don't know if I'm doing this Christian thing right. Mm. Like I'm trying and I, I know, and you have to have faith that the Lord is working even in those moments where you can't see it. Even when you're like, I prayed, where's my answer? Mm-hmm. I, I did the thing. I read, I went to the Bible study. Yeah. When am I going to be called to ministry? Yeah. Like there's a dissatisfaction, a divine dissatisfaction mm-hmm. that we have to come to terms with as believers. Yeah. Well, and um, again, going back to the garden, God had a divine dissatisfaction when he said it is not good that man should be alone on that seven day. And yeah. And like it, there's so many things that we experience that honestly, I look at like, wow, God, like you have already given us the, the insight into this because yeah. you, you've shown us, um, I've shown you a mortal. What is good? What is good? <laughs> but, That's right. Yeah. But truly like you've shown us what it is to perfectly process these things, um, which reminds us how broken we are and how mm-hmm. imperfectly we process um, the same kinds of emotions and the same kinds of longings of the soul. Um, but yet, like, when God saw that it was not good, God was able to create a situation in which fulfillment could happen and satisfaction yeah. was realized. That's right. Um, and we take on, um, being little image bearers, we take on that, like, okay, this isn't working the way I want it to. I need to do something that will satisfy what I want. Mm -hmm. And I think in those moments, we can ask ourselves questions, not just what can I do to feel better? Mm -hmm. What can I do to feel happy? What can I do to feel in this moment what I want to feel? But what will satisfy the situation? Because God saw that it was not good that man should be alone. Mm -hmm. He saw a situation that needed to be satisfied, and therefore he found the solution, which was, a woman, of course. <laughs> a woman was a solution. Um, but my f- woman's been my solution. But, <laughs> um, but for us, oftentimes, it's how can I satisfy the way that I feel? Mm-hmm. Not how can I satisfy the situation? And yeah. it's interesting because, like, you read the Psalms, you read a lot of scriptures talk about satisfaction yeah. or being, um, being pleased even. Like, these are words that can mean similar things. And I love, um, it's, in, it's in Mary's song, I think, mm-hmm. but it's also in Psalm 107. Okay. Um, it says that he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Mm, so good. And this isn't just, again, it's not just the temporal, like not just being satisfied on this side. Cause mm-hmm. there are things that God um, allows us to experience by his grace that yes, will satisfy us for a time like eating, mm-hmm. but no one is ever satisfied after only one meal. Yeah. 
And so there's, there's this understanding, okay, he, he does satisfy us, but he also eternally satisfies the longing of our soul, which is why, like you said, when we have that faith that there's something beyond this life, yeah. no matter how good I can make it uh, in, this, um, in this situation or how satisfied I can be through this by this means, there's something else on the other side of the end of this life that I know is going to satisfy me more than anything I could possibly create or manufacture here. Yeah. And for the believer, what we understand is that that's Jesus. Like, um, we see even in reading scripture, we see the dissatisfaction throughout the entire old Testament Mm. of like having to go to the temple and sacrifice and having to always longing for more and looking for the redemption and pointing towards the Messiah. And then we see the redemption. We see the satisfaction of the law in Christ Jesus. And we see that the ultimate satisfaction was paid in what seemed to be the most unsatisfying way, right? Mm. Because Jesus crucifixion. um, And by the time you watch this, it'll be after um, Palm Sunday. But as Jesus entered in on Palm Sunday, they were expecting satisfaction. They were expecting Mm -hmm. Jesus to ride in and overthrow the Roman government, the secular government to establish God's kingdom. But Jesus died on a cross and disappointed Mm -hmm. thousands of people who were chanting his name the week before. Mm-hmm. And he died on the cross in the most unsatisfactory way. Like that's, yeah. nobody was expecting that. And so it was very dis, um, I guess, unsatisfying, dissatisfying. Both. Non-satisfying. Anti-satisfying. In, Santa, in Santa's factory. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in that he paid the ultimate price, which satisfied yeah. the, the law. The wrath of God. Yeah. yeah, satisfied the full law. Like it's fulfilled in Christ. And so um, I forgot where I was going with that, but I just think that's really cool. Yeah, that's really good. And I mean, there are things that we can experience um, in our sanctification that are not satisfying, (laughs) that actually fulfill and satisfy the will of God, Mm -hmm. that we would be made holy, that we would be set apart, that we would be um, the kind of people that glorify him through our suffering. And as we imitate Christ, that is the calling of the believer, like go right. through the things that, that, um, maybe kill your pride, but help to grow your joy. And that may not be satisfying. <laughs> there may be a part of you that has to, um, set aside your desire for comfort and affirmation and, yeah. um, maybe even being liked yeah. uh, for a time so that you can satisfy what God is trying to do in you. And I love the scripture that says that he um, rejoices over you with singing. Um, there is something beautiful about knowing that even when we are struggling, we, even when we are the most uh, acting, the most unsatisfying, when we are doing the thing that is not satisfying to God, he's like, oh my gosh, why are you doing that? That's so, <laughs> you embarrassing me. Why are you doing it? I'm cringing. I'm cringing God right now. Cringes at you. Oh, you're so extra. When God <laughs> is doing that, um, yet he rejoices over us. Yet he, he looks on his creation. He sees the unsatisfying things that we do, and yet he chooses to turn that into something for his glory. Mm. And that, I mean, honestly, I want to see a satisfying video where somebody takes the mess that somebody made, like, you know, like, something ugly mm-hmm. and then turns that like there was that one you were watching with the wood thing. Oh yeah. Wood turning turned to gnarled. Yeah, it was wood like a knot. really ugly, gross looking wood knot. And he started to turn it. And like the more he was chiseling at it and doing this, I don't know what he was doing. It was his hand. <laughs> it's um, a lathe. He was a, lathe. a lathe. Um, it started to turn smooth mm-hmm. and like it was, it didn't say it was a satisfying video. Mm-mm. It just was like, Oh, cool. Wood thing or whatever the title was something way more clickbaity than what I just said. But as I was watching, I was like, that's the kind of stuff I want to see. That's the kind of stuff that I, I really believe that God uses, um, in our lives. Like those Mm -hmm. gnarly, just like, Oh, nobody wants to look at that. What are you going to use that for? Yeah. And he just starts to turn it. And the more he turns and sometimes it's fast and sometimes it takes a little bit more like to dig in and say like, okay, I'm going to trust me. I'm going to make this satisfying. But in the process, you're just going to have to shut up and just deal with it and right deal now. with being dissatisfied. Just deal with it for a moment. Well, and um, we could talk about this forever because mm-hmm. there are so many dissatisfying or unsatisfying things. What There's is so- the word? Is it dissatisfying? I'm going to say there's a lot of dissatisfication. Nope, no, that's not even a word. 
dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction. Uh, y'all. That needs to be know. an album. This is, <laughs> needs to be a rap album. The dissatisfaction of Lord Israel. Hill. If you're listening to this, please make your next <laughs> album the dissatisfaction. Um, but no, like there's a lot of things in this life that are not satisfying. There we go. That's how I'm gonna say it. Um, and I love that you said, as a believer, you're gonna have to deal with that, and you're gonna have to trust that God is taking that and making, um a deeper satisfaction in your life. Um, because I know through loss and through grief and through uh, frustrating times and all of the things that you can go through in this life, you won't see the growth and you won't see satisfaction until you're far on the other side. Sometimes you won't see what God is doing until it's already done. And so um, just as an encouragement to you listening today, um, if you're in that place of being dissatisfied, having that divine dissatisfaction, seek satisfaction, Seek satisfaction in the Lord. It's like a tongue twister saying all those S's. Mm-hmm. But also, um, you watch your satisfaction videos, that's fine. But just understand why. Understand the deeper meaning behind your need to feel satisfied in your soul. Yeah, and appreciate that it's a gift to be satisfied and to even be aware of your need to be satisfied. Like That's such a gift of grace to know that something's missing and I know that I'm meant to be satisfied. Um, and honestly, like if you have that drive and you need to have the fidget toy or you need to watch those things, I think it's a, it's a good, um, it's a good sign of mental health, like your, your awareness to be able to say, okay, what, what am I trying to control? Yep. What in my life am I, am I really trying to hold on to that maybe I need to let go of, or maybe I need someone who can talk me through this. Maybe you need a mental health professional. Maybe you need someone that can give you that insight that you don't have to see those issues and to be able to heal from that. Because just because you're a believer does not mean that you do not need a mental health professional or you may not need therapy. You may not like, you may need those things to be able to process it. And that may bring you into a place of greater satisfaction when you, when you have someone alongside you with that. So that's That's my little bit. That's That's all I'm going to say. Well, this has been the next podcast. Mm -hmm. We hope this episode has connected you to living truth. Be Be blessed. blessed.